Greetings, Farmington Public Schools family, and welcome to the Superintendent Spotlight. I am Dr. Bobby Hayes Goodrum, your interim superintendent, and today we are going to highlight Women's History Month. And I am pleased to have two phenomenal Farmington Public Schools educators with us today, and I'm going to give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. We're going to start with Miss Christine Trent. Hi, I'm Chris Trent. I teach at Farmington High School, and I'm the engineering and architecture teacher here. And we have Miss Tracy Willis. Hi, I'm Tracy Willis. I teach fifth grade. Currently, I teach fifth grade at Beachview Elementary. So we're super happy to have both Miss Trent and Miss Willis with us today. who are going to talk about some amazing things that they're doing. So we're going to start with Miss Trent. Miss Trent, I hear you've got this wonderful program over there called Tech Girls. Can you give us a little bit more information about that? Oh, for sure. So Tech Girls was the brainchild of our Hackbot team about 15 years ago or so. And they were trying to think of ways they could do outreach to the middle schools to bring more students in, and in particular girls, get some girls fired up about automotive, robotics, engineering. So they decided to host Tech Girls, which is an event we have in the spring. And this year we're gonna be having it at the end of May. So everyone can look for an email, Facebook blast, et cetera. We're gonna be advertising for it. Um, and it's a student run activity. So the girls on the Hackbots run this activity and we do three different challenges. We do an automotive challenge in Mr. Lazzarino's room and the girls do some welding with him. Then we do a robotics challenge and the Hackbots get the robot out and they do the actual challenge uh, with the girls that we do for the competition. And then we do a challenge in the engineering classroom. And this year we're gonna be making decision makers. So you could ask a question like, can I have my phone back? Can you hold it down? Let go and you get your answer. So it's like an electronic eight ball. And we're gonna be soldering these and working with the girls, the high school students. And it's really pretty awesome because it gives the seventh and eighth grade girls a chance to meet some girls from other middle schools that have the same interest as them. They get to see what their high school experience is going to be like because they see girls doing the same things that they want to do, you know, kind of geeking out over a robot and, and making stuff like this. And they get to see the high school because we do it both at Farmington and at North. So they get to see the school they're going to go to. They get to make some friends, make some older friends, because then when they come into school in ninth grade, they know some of the members of the Hackbots. And uh, it's just a fun, like non-threatening uh, experience for them where they can uh, make friends, uh, meet me, meet Mr. Lazzarino, see the school, and then have uh, something to take home along with a, a Tech Girls t-shirt. Oh, that's awesome. I'd love to probably feature one of the Tech Girls or a couple of Tech Girls on a future presentation. We That'd be awesome. Do we maybe, do that. maybe. Getting ready for their... Um... We're gonna be doing it at the end of May. Right. We're waiting mm -hmm. for approval from facilities management for a date. Uh, then we're going to open up, like back there, you can see the Hackbots banner, 2019 champs. Uh, we'll open that up and, uh, you know, sit outside to eat, you know, socially distanced. And then we'll be able to spread out here and in the auto shop. So just in case someone doesn't know, because we've talked about Hackbots a little bit, what is Hackbots? Hackbots is our first robotics team, and Steve Trashel at Power High School, uh, Middle School, is the uh, coach. And they, it's a district team unified, both uh, North and Farmington, and it's here in 704 in my classroom and in the shop. And it starts, it's a year-round activity, and they're always doing stuff. And you might have seen them on Facebook uh, advertising their hygiene drive, for example. They're always collecting stuff outside of Farmington and a couple other schools, there's a supply box that you can open and anytime you need something, you can take it like pencils, paper, uh, all sorts of stuff. So they're do always doing a school supply drive, a hygiene drive, they put stuff in there and it's a need one, take one basis. The competition when we're in competition starts up in January and then they're here in the shop five, six days a week building their robot <clears throat> and they got to be done in six weeks. It's got to be ready to go. It's a worldwide competition. The last few years, it's been at Cobo Hall pre-pandemic, and uh, we've gone down there. We've taken a large Farmington contingent to cheer on the Hackbots. 
uh, you know, at uh, Cobo Hall. And we've got our teams been in the finals for Worlds, meaning teams from Korea, China, India, Nigeria. We're like up, right up in there. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm looking forward to, to seeing tech girls and seeing more from the Hackbox in the future. That's awesome. Now, Miss Willis, you have um, a Cultures of Thinking book club that you do. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, about that? Absolutely. So uh, the conversations that we've been having here at Beachview, um, historically how this started is we've been looking for ways to empower the diverse voices that are in our classroom. And we kind of started down the cultures of thinking, making thinking visible journey together as a staff about four years ago. And then um, we also started talking about how and realizing the importance of having not just those voices represented in the classroom, but that students could see themselves represented in the books that we're sharing every month. And so we, this is our, I gotta think, this is our second year doing this. We have a different book every month that represents a, um, um, a, a diverse population. And we share that same book in all classrooms, kindergarten through fifth grade. And then we are sharing um, it via ma making thinking visible routines. And so students get a chance to really develop their thinking, develop their voice. We've been looking intensely at discourse strategies as well within this project. And then the really cool part is that all of that thinking goes up on the walls. And so when we walk down our classroom, my fifth graders are able to see what the first grade class down the hall from them thought about the book. And they're able to see why well, I, I thought the same thing or I had a different opinion. And so we're able to add to our discourse and it, it's really boosted us up as a community too of diverse learners. So um, this is our second year and um, we're having a blast with it. Um, and even though we've been virtual this year, we have created virtual presentations of the book. So our teachers who are virtual are still part of that larger community. Um, so if we can't share the book physically, we're sharing it virtually. And then we've created virtual resources that we can use to um, do our thinking about the book still rooted in visible thinking routines. So we're using Jamboard, we're using Google Slide Decks, you name it, we're using it. Um, we're using some of the things in Canvas to do video recordings of our thinking. Um, and then the discussions in Canvas. So we're using the tools that we have at hand to continue um, our march towards um, diversity in our building. What, what was your book selection for this month? Okay, so for this month, I'm so excited about this book. Um, I think it came out last year, and it's called The Proudest Blue, and it's the story of hijab and family. And the reason that it was chosen for this month is it has a girl protagonist, and it's a younger sister who's talking about the first time that um, her sister is selecting her, is going to wear her hijab. And so it's a big deal that first day. And they talk about how wearing hijab is a symbol of strength in their culture. And so the sister picks out this glorious blue hijab scarf to wear. And the little sister is so excited. And they go to school and she watches classmates around her reacting to her sister's hijab. Some of them are just whispering questions because they don't understand. But others are really not so cool. Um, one, one character, in fact, says that he's going to take that tablecloth off her head. Mm -hmm. And so um, students get to hear about how this character deals with that. And um, some of the biggest, strongest statements in the book that we've been talking about, I know in, in fifth grade, um, the mother says to the girl, some people won't understand your hijab, but if you understand who you are, then one day they will too. And so um, we've been talking a lot about the strength of knowing who you are and what makes you who you are and that that individuality is priceless. So um, yeah, that's that's why we chose the book. <laughs> has anything, have any of the students' reactions surprised you at all? Um, what was interesting in the initial conversations, we did um, a three, two, one routine. It's called three, two, one bridge. And it asks the students to think of um, three words around, a, to think of three words around a concept, 
two questions around the concept, and then a simile. And they do that before the learning event, and then they do it after, so you can compare their responses. So what's been interesting is to see how um, the concept we wanted kids, I wanted kids in my classroom to think about was the concept of pride. What does it mean to be proud? What does it mean to have pride? And at the very beginning, a lot of them had a, a negative connotation to pride. Mm. So they were thinking of pride as being cocky, right? Of being self-assured, of kind of in your face, you know. Um, so they were thinking of it as a negative way. So after the reading of this, and we went back to those conversations of pride, what was kind of exciting was to see the change in thinking. That pride is also a positive thing. It doesn't have to mean I'm cocky. It has it has to do with what what I just said, knowing who you are and being okay with that and feeling good about who you are or good about your efforts or good about your learning or whatever it is that you you feel successful at. So um, that was kind of cool to see that shift in thinking between the pre and the post. Yeah, that is. That's very interesting. And but you can see how it happens. Sometimes when when people think about somebody being proud, it is like haughty. Exactly. They're just yeah. believing in themselves. So yeah. you can see how they got that. Um, so interesting. Very interesting. Well, ladies, before um, you leave, I have to ask you uh, the compulsory March question. So again, March is Reading Month, and it is Women's History Month. So you get to choose. It's ladies' choice. Would you can either let me know of a woman who has in positively, or you can tell us about your favorite book or your favorite author. So your Christine, choice. You wanna, Christine, you want to go first? Um, <laughs> well, I can tell you about my uh, inspirational architect. Emily Butterfield is Michigan's first woman architect. And that was about a hundred years ago uh, when she went to Syracuse, got her architecture license, came back to Michigan. She's in the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame. Thank you, that's amazing, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna say it, my mama. <laughs> so my mom, my mom was a career teacher and her mom was a career teacher. So it's kind of like come down through the bloodline, I guess. But my mom, um, she was my first teacher and watching her in her classroom because I was the, the teacher's kid who lived at school. I learned how to be a teacher from my mom before I ever went to education classes and, you know, went to college. So, um, yeah, her choices and the the um, challenges that she laid before me, the different way of looking at the world sometimes um, and the strength to do that. I owe that to my mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Willis and Ms. Trent, for joining us today for our Superintendent Spotlight. Uh, we hope that all of you in the community have enjoyed learning about the Cultures of Thinking Book Club and Tech Girls. We're looking forward to hearing great things in the future from both of these initiatives. So thank you for tuning in and see you not next week because it's spring break. I hope everyone has a relaxing spring break, a safe spring break, okay? Uh, remember to please still wear your mask and everything. Um, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye. Bye.